There are times when I think that wizards could take a large diamond-studded gold bar, wrap it in $100 bills, and then mail it to the front step of every magic player in the world, at which point the forums would erupt with complaints that this damn bar was too heavy. What powers the heart of the magic community is not the game itself, but a constant black pulse of solid griping. Doesn't matter what wizards gives us, we'll find something to bitch about. Now, the latest gripe media hit the tubes revolves around the lame coverage of worlds in the Invitational which in turn centers mostly on a few minor issues. Number one, BDM and Randy apparently not only had some problems explaining what a minor card like Garrick Wildspeaker did, but at least one player, that would be Patrick Chapin, could overhear them discussing the game as it happened, potentially affecting the game itself. Oops. Number two, the analysis of legacy decks of worlds was supposedly ignorant of the usual legacy metagame, wherein the reporters touted the, quote, new tech of decks that had apparently been around since a Model T was invented. And number three, there was barely any coverage at all of the Invitational. You remember that tournament. That's where we locked 16 of the most vibrant magic personalities in existence in a room together so we could see the deck list they played. Yes siree, what better way to celebrate the joy of magic than by giving us non-existent coverage that was as dry as a sawdust sandwich. Now, Wizards is putting more effort into magic reporting these days, and that's good. But the truth is that most magic reporting sucks, and it will continue to suck for the rest of our lifetime. And I'm going to explain why magic reporting isn't very good by talking about something that's not at all similar. Computer books. Most computer books suck the rotting moose guts out of dead rabbits. They're either written in dense, unforgiving language that looks like the Torah just fornicated with a bad JavaScript program, or they assume you're a one-eyed gimp who's pounding the mouse against your monitor in a vain attempt to crack walnuts. What you get? is either a wall of obscure rocket science that's way above anyone's head, or an oatmeal flow of insipid beginner's tutorials. But why? Why are computer books so bad? Well, first off, computer programmers make a lot of money. According to CNN, an average level 1 programmer makes $52,000 a year. If you're a level 2 programmer, you can make around $80,000 a year. And when you get to level 3, you can not only earn $110,000 a year, but you have the option to multi-class, which is when you can become a level 2 programmer, first level wizard. This allows you to cast Magic Missile once a day, which comes in very handy when you're on tech support. But, let's get back to the issue here. A computer book will net you roughly $5,000 to $20,000 if you're a first-time author. And that sounds like a really good deal, until you realize how much damn work a book takes. That $10,000 will work out to be about $15 an hour when all is said and done, which is more than you can earn by bagging groceries, to be sure, but when you can earn $40 an hour by clipping your toenails and waiting for your programs to compile, you start looking for other ways to spend your time profitably. And books are no fun to write. Finishing a computer book is both painstaking and tedious, and the slightest error will get you called a moron on Slashdot. In fact, the only reason you would write a book is if you're a bloated egomaniac who wants to see your name printed on everything you can get your grubby little paws on. And here's the other problem. Most people, they hate formal writing. Uh, they will drool half-assed comments in a forum until the cows come home. But ask them to put together a full article on something relevant, and they scatter like cockroaches when the lights turn on. Writing's actual work, and stacking together 20 or 30 paragraphs to form a coherent argument? Well, for most people, that's like crawling on broken glass. Magic reporting is the exact same deal. On the whole... The pros make more money by actually playing Magic, since generally the funds you'll get paid for Magic reporting, you know, they're not going to pay your flight home. And frankly, given the choice between sitting next to a keyboard, trying to explain why Tarfire is a good card limited, or going out and drinking massive doses of absinthe and dancing with hot foreign ladies, eh, I gotta say, writing's a tough choice for anyone. Plus, even if you can chain some big-name pro to the keyboard, there's no guarantee he's any good at it. There's a skill involved in explaining things to people, and the Venn diagram of good at playing magic and good at explaining magic has a pretty darn small intersection. Plus, if you do your job right, it makes your opponents better, which in turn makes it that much harder to make the top eight at the next pro tour. That means that what we generally have left is bad to okay players, people who don't have much to lose by sharing, who happen to be really good writers. Unfortunately, magic is the most complicated game in the world and you're given less than ideal conditions to report it from. If you've never really been to a Pro Tour, let me explain what reporting is like. You are squeezed in next to one of two players, neither of whom really want you there to distract them. These players will not, and more importantly, should not, slow down the game so you can ask, uh, wait a minute, wh what just happened? 
so it all takes place in real time. You have a laptop upon which you're frantically trying to jot notes, but every time you look down at the screen, those bastards play another card. Here you are, ping-ponging back and forth between opponent number one, the playfield, opponent number two, wait, he's attacking, what's happening now? There's some sort of card going on here. Damn it, my laptop's running out of power, and you have to finish now, because the next round is starting up in 15 minutes. And can you hand in your article before then so we can get it up on the site? Okay, thanks, bye. You are, essentially, trying to fathom the internal motivation of two players, both of whom are probably far better than you are, and you're trying to do it on the fly, without any opportunity for rewinding or revisions. Hell. You're lucky if you can write down what happened in the correct order. And if you're extremely lucky, you don't knock your glass full of Diet Pepsi over on the table in the quarterfinals, unlike some idiot did while reporting on Rob Doherty at Grand Prix Cleveland. But leaving the Pepsi aside, that hard-to-follow thing can't be underestimated. There's a lot going on in any Magic game. And even when you're the one who's playing, sometimes you forget about the wording on a recently revised card or the number of cards your opponent has in hand. Now, following the course of two people in real time, when they're playing decks that you may not even know about, forget about it. Plus, let me say it again, Magic is the toughest game in the whole world. There are strategies within strategies, and understanding these goals and sub-goals are critical to properly marking down what's really notable about a game. But getting a 1600 ranked player to follow a 1900s moves is like asking Rosie O'Donnell to comment eloquently upon Stephen Hawking's science equations. Even for very good players, and BDM and Randy are good, don't get me wrong. It's really easy to misinterpret why someone's doing something, and that can lead to embarrassing calls in mid-game. If you actually listen to people whispering to each other around the edges of a feature match, you'll hear that even the really good players don't get someone's strategy all the time. And when you have an open mic, you just derfed it in full view of the whole world. It's not pleasant, but it's almost unavoidable. Now, if you're a good writer, and you're not doing everything live, you can try to gloss over your lack of talent and your lack of skill with a dazzling writing style, which is the equivalent of a clown juggling merrily in front of a burning building. Thankfully, not everyone's as bad as I am, which may explain why Wizards isn't calling me up anymore, but the fact remains that magic reporting is extremely hard to do, so that's any worthwhile at all. So, you have an inadequate view, too little time, and the opportunity to make really embarrassing mistakes live before the entire world, which is why magic reporting is extremely hard to do so that it's worthwhile at all. So, why not cut out the middleman? I mean, if this text thing isn't working out, why not have Evan Irwin fly to the rescue with his magical video camera? After all, video is suited perfectly to magic. You can see everything on the table at your leisure, and you can go back and call out the good place as you see them. But here's the thing. Video takes 11 billion hours to do properly. Oh, it looks easy, but you have to cut away a lot. And to give you the excellent coverage that he's done this far, Evan Irwin locks himself in a darkened room for 80 hours a week. He's ignoring his crying children and his starving wife. His skin grows a pale white fungus in the pallid light of his monster as he edits and codexes and copies. All for you. He no longer has a job and in fact subsists entirely upon the love that magic players around the world radiate to him from afar. I'm his editor. I know. Occasionally, I donate him money so he can eat. And obviously, that means that video is not a workable paradigm unless you're willing to contribute to the poor. So, why not put more money into it? Why doesn't Wizards hire a professional video crew instead of one Mr. Orange? Why doesn't Wizards bring in seven reporters to watch the entire tournament so we could have two or three in-depth articles on each round? In fact, why don't we slow down the pace of the tournament itself to make sure there's time to interview the pros and find out exactly what they did? In short, why doesn't Wizards treat tournaments like coverage mattered? And it's because, statistically speaking, you're a freak. Trust me, I've edited this site since the days of the dinosaurs, and I have a pretty decent idea of what turns Magic players on. If you enjoy watching nerds play magic, you're pretty marginal already. No, what most people want is they want the sweet, sticky joy that is tech. People don't want to schlep through the turn-by-turn -turn comparisons. They want to scoop out the juicy new deck that will win them the next PTQ. They don't want to spend time thinking about the correct way to mulligan. There's a killer sideboarding plan to be had. See, there's this bizarre mindset in the magic community that if you can get the right deck, the correct decisions will flow naturally. That's why people are obsessed with pick orders and drafts, but hardly anyone pays attention to the correct limited play. Based on my experience here at StarCityGames.com, I can tell you that more people want to read about some new and untested deck than who want to read about how to play an old winning deck correctly. Why do people think this? I don't know. 
Maybe it's because play skill is damned hard to teach, but handing someone a new deck is easy. Maybe it's because everyone secretly thinks they're awesome, and if they lose, it's not because they suck, but because that meanie deck brought them down. And maybe it's because the evil titan Gleemax has written the idea that better and more expensive cards means more wins, and they've inscribed that idea directly upon our very brain cells, causing us to line up like Pavlovian dogs to purchase cases upon cases of Morning Tide. But the end result is even if Wizards did spend several thousand dollars to bring in reporters to really highlight magic as it's played, it wouldn't actually do that much. By and large, people don't want to see the cards played in a match. What they want to do is they want to boil the corpse of the round down until they can carry the barest bones of strategy away from it. Who wants to sift through 20 turns when you can just steal the essence of it? And thus, most of what people care about is stuff you don't actually need to be there to get. What decks made the top 8? What sealed decks went undefeated on day 1? There are a whole bunch of things, but you just gotta give the people what they want. And that, my friends, is why reporting sucks. Reporting is really hard to do, and there's not a whole lot of reward even if you do it correctly. It's kinda like, ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Spending 11 hours making a magic video bitching about the coverage?